You're listening to That Gets My Goat. You should know better. Thanks for listening to Dupo Remo for today. See you later, folks. Oh, crap. Was this a Dupo Remo? I didn't even let people know. And we're back. On Friday, they were showing Robin Hood men in tights at the clinic. And I think it's the third time they'd shown Robin Hood men in tights while I was there. Oh, is this an insane asylum and I, clinic? I found it more unbearable this time than the other two times, probably because I got so much more of it this time. In the past, it was always like the last 10 minutes or 25 uh, minutes or something. This time it was like... you an, said I got more, so much more of it. I think, what, you finally got the jokes? Really? Or It was a Mel Brooks movie. Come on. Well, see, I don't... They're not intelligent jokes. I don't have a problem with Mel Brooks, but I think that movie is friggin' terrible. It is. It's so unfunny that it's one of those... You take away any award he might have gotten for the producers, he might have gotten for Blazing Saddles, you know, stuff like that. History of the World Part One. Frankenstein. Because it is just sub moronic. (laughs) And like all of the dancing, the river dancing jokes and, and all that happy horse shit. I honestly cannot imagine anybody thinking that that was funny. And and I usually maybe I'm like that all the time, because I that's how I am with the mad TV or whatever it's called thing where I'm just like, wow, that is friggin' anti-funny, dude. <laughs> if, if there's an opposite of funny, that's what it is. A- anyhow, at the end, like Dick Van Patten comes out and he's the Abbot. And it's like, good morning, Abbot. Hello, Abbot. And then this guy goes, hey, Abbot. And he goes, I hate that guy. And they actually play that moment twice in the film. And when it finally ended, they put on Young Frankenstein. And this guy stepped over, one of the guys that works there. And I was like, oh, why couldn't you have done this in the opposite order? Because this movie I actually like. And he's like, this one, Young Frankenstein? Oh, I think this movie is terrible. And I was like, terrible after Robin Hood Men in Tights? And he says, oh, I really like Robin Hood Men in Tights. I laugh every time. I, what line? Guess what? Hey, Abbott. I laugh every time that guy in the crowd goes, hey, Abbott. And I just, I wanted to either kill this guy or die or have it to be some ritual murder suicide pact because i hate men in tights more every time i see it because the things that maybe i once found funny i no longer find funny and the things that i found unfunny the last time are way unfunny now I, i bet that that movie made a fair amount of money just because of that kind of anti hype feeling that you get for Anything that's overhyped, it came so hot on the heels of Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, and that movie was so hyped, and it had like all the you know the number one song and et cetera, et cetera, to where uh, he's just so sick of it, and then everybody, oh, a movie making fun of that, great, I'll go see it, and I remember thinking. Oh, yeah, that's going to be funny, especially when you get Carrie Elwes saying, oh, but I can do an English accent, you know. And, and he looks at the camera. Yeah, and you just think, that's a good dig at Kevin Costner. Oh, I love it. And then I saw it and I was like, oh, how could I have been so unbelievably wrong about whether this movie could be good or not good? Because this movie was not good. I See, I'd never seen Young Frankenstein. I never saw Blazing Saddles. I, I heard people talk about them sometimes. I never saw Spaceballs, which some people seem to think is really funny, but I never even found the little bits that they showed on commercials and stuff to be funny myself. Well, Spaceballs is that joke translated into German that would kill the enemy compared to Men in Tights. Probably. The only movie that I saw of Mel Brooks growing up was History of the World Part 1. And? I loved I thought that was really funny. But then, oh, okay. Yeah. Then I saw... Men in tights, and I was just like, Ugh. and then worse yet, a few years later, in the theater, I saw Dracula Dead and Loving It, which was pretty much on par with. Oh, see, with I like Dracula Dead Robin and Loving Hood. It. it was just endlessly stupid. It's like you say the pun is the lowest form of humor, and you just do? below that is Mel Brooks. <laughs> he is just the farthest thing from funny that I can imagine. I don't know how he's had such a long career. Although, maybe I'm a little too hard on him because of the movies of his that I did see. I don't know. I I have to give him some credit because I thought History of the World Part 1 was really funny when I was a kid. I I mean, I must have been like 8 years old or 10 years old when I saw it. So that does kind of give you the idea of the level of humor that Mel Brooks is aiming for generally. 
but I can't find anything that he does funny. I don't know what it is about it. It's kryptonite to me. Okay, well, you know, we we do talk about the things that I find (laughs) kryptonite-desque all the time, so it's only fair that we mention stuff for you. Yeah, maybe someday if we ever do do our deal breaker things, I can mention Mel Brooks. Sure. Mel Brooks is involved. Deal breaker. But like when I was a little kid and I first saw Young Frankenstein, the I am Frau Blucher (laughs) used to make me laugh so hard. And I just saw that part on Friday. I, I was out of there by like the 15 minute mark, but I got to see that part. And, uh, I don't know. It still was just still endlessly amusing, amusing yeah. that like they're inside the castle and you hear the horses in the distance when her name is muttered. Oh, gosh, I love that. But, you know, I guess everybody has their own sense of humor barometer kind of thing. And uh-huh. I, I, I've told where where did I tell the story of us watching Monty Python and the Holy Grail in my very first film class at junior college? I told it on some show, either it was either That Gets My Goat or a regular show. It was probably on an interview for the Cowrie Catchers. Right. <laughs> <laughs> We're overdue for one of those, by the way. Um, uh, we don't have any lines on there anymore, do we? I don't I, I don't think, think so. I think all our characters are dead and assassinated. You can and... only molest Norm Sherman so many times before they don't ask you back to the party. <laughs> but, uh, but we watched that and I thought it was so funny. And I had already seen it countless times, but, you know, there were people in the room that had never seen it before. And and you get a, a huge swath of culture in a junior college class. Like, gosh, they ought to make a show about that. They should. And that would be funny. I remember with like, and then the oral sex, somebody in the room was just like, <gasps> You know, gather my books. I got to get out before that part starts. And I was just like <laughs> the naivete of somebody who would think – that, that that's they're going to show a, a porno scene next <laughs> in a movie in a class that we're all watching together. But anyhow, there was this guy that was so vocal about how unfunny Monty Python, and the Holy Grail was afterward that I thought he made an ass of himself because he kept referring to the actors as French. And he kept <laughs> referring to that. You couldn't understand their French accent. And I thought that it made him sound like an idiot. That, you know, like King Arthur is French, but <laughs> he was confusing for Joan of Arc, but not long after that, because I, I think for a couple of chapters in the book, we were talking about comedy because, you know, they go through different genres mm-hmm. or styles or I don't know what you'd call comedy. I guess it's a genre. That's but a French word. Genre or com- comedy. So we watched. No, there's no comedy involved in French whatsoever, but genre, that is a French word. Yes. Okay. So I think the movie immediately after Monty Python was Summer of 42, which was, I didn't think it was a comedy, so maybe I'm completely wrong. But it's a coming of age movie made, I think, in the 70s or it might have been early 80s. I don't know. But it's basically a, you know, Wonder Years kind of thing. Looking back when this kid was a teenager and he had sex for the first time with his teacher, who was a John Hausman type. No, no, it was a. You know, like a young Kathy Bates. <laughs> okay, that that works. But anyhow, I didn't get how this was possibly a comedy. I mean, seriously, I was just like, "What? This isn't a comedy, you guys. Come on, no, this is. I don't think this was meant to be funny. I mean, is American Graffiti a comedy?" And they all looked at me like, eh. "All right, let me try to think of the equivalent of American Graffiti for today's audiences." What is is how about regarding Henry? Is that a comedy? And the guy's like, ah, <laughs> he was a lawyer and he got shot. Anyhow, I, it was one of those things where that was funny because the squirrel got dead. <laughs> oh, that's an up reference, isn't it? Yeah, everybody has their slide rule, and I think just between you and me, because nobody listens to these. I'll admit something to you. I actually was kind of offended by Summer 42. I don't think that I was a prude or anything like that, but I just, I guess I was upset by the idea of a teacher seducing her student or the opposite or whatever. And maybe I hadn't seen enough sex comedies. Maybe that's what it was, you know, because there were a lot in the very early 80s of we got to lose our virginity, go kind of movies. Mm -hmm. And maybe this was made around that same time. But I think up to that point, all of the comedies like that, 
the guys would fail to lose their virginity. They'd try and try and, oh, there would be all sorts of hijinks, <laughs> you know, obstacles, comedic obstacles put in the way to keep them from losing their virginity. There's a lot of movies like that right. where it's just like, okay, we're going to go to the whorehouse you know, we've saved up all of our money all month and we're going to go to the whorehouse and we're going to lose our virginity. Yay. And they drive and they get a flat tire and then they run out of gas or whatever. And they finally get to the whorehouse and all the prostitutes are at church because it's Sunday and it's closed. <laughs> and they're like, oh, no, kind of thing. You know, it's just one. of, and, and I guess I expected that sort of thing. And, you know, the guy loses his virginity first try, you know, and, and it's like, wow. And, you know, his math teacher or whatever, it's just like, you know, now we're going to do some quadratic equations oh no it's more like long division mm. oh. that gets my goat will be continued next time run while you still can <laughs> that gets my goat is produced under creative commons attribution non-commercial no derivatives license sad but true i think the first time i did it i was just responding to you saying y'all and now I've heard that so many times <laughs> that I just say y'all. But Fezzik, you did something right. I won't let it go to my... How, what was it? Don't worry. I won't, I won't let, let it go, go to, to my, my head. head. Anybody want to paint it? And I thought, there are four of us. And I found four wild horses. Did we ever send the lady? Oh. Hello, Hello, lady. lady. I can't help I'm bigger and stronger. <laughs> I don't even exercise.